Hello, welcome to a new video. Today is something different, a whole bunch of USB testers. I kept adding more as I was working on this, so 13 USB testers are compared for performance. There are several things that matter for these USB chargers. The first is you really want this thing to appear as invisible as possible to measure the performance of whatever you are plugging in. There are certainly some trade-offs to plugging in a device in between a power adapter or power bank and the device you are charging or powering. Some of these testers offer more advanced functionality, but most of them are just power meters. So in this video, meters themselves will be tested for performance, like how many watts of heat do they need to reject and how much power do they use? Does the amount of power needed change with different voltages? We all know USB voltage fluctuates depending on the connected devices. So that and more will be covered in this video. There's affiliate links which earn me a couple percent but cost you nothing in the description, as well as links for more information. Many thanks to my patrons and channel supporters. The detailed data is on Patreon. Okay, so first of all, what is a USB tester and why do you want one? It is a very useful diagnostic tool to check if a device like a laptop or a phone is operating correctly and power is flowing as needed from device to device. There are a few basic measurements that need to be done to accomplish this. First of all, voltage. I'm not gonna do a physics deep dive in this video, but voltage is the potential between the two wires carrying current, which then becomes the power that gets to your device. There's a positive and a negative. These devices often use a divider circuit and an analog to digital converter to directly measure the voltage. The input of these circuits is often high resistance, so shouldn't affect the measurement that is being taken. This is the easier thing to measure, and how well this can measure voltage is half of the equation. Next, these things need to measure current. This is the flow rate into your device. The current is measured by using something called a current shunt. This is a small resistor. Yes, small, exactly. Thanks for that demo. In reality, these are tiny resistors of very small values where when current flows through them, a voltage is generated. Now, a resistance in series and generating a voltage drop, yes, this is a parasitic element that does affect the output and does consume some energy. The goal is to balance the value of this resistance with the sensitivity of the circuit. Noise becomes a problem with these devices, but also reference stability and so much more. These are cheap and simple meters. They generally use a 1% tolerance resistor and many don't have proper four wire connections. The value of this resistance meter to meter varies, but from what I found, it looks like between 10 milliohms and 50 milliohms were used. This means the burden voltage across these devices is quite reasonable and they won't actually dissipate a crazy amount of power, even at five amps, they do okay. I'll show more of that later on. The series resistance values do remove some connector resistance. And so I had to use a cable to subtract the system resistance. So these values are a little bit optimistic, but they work for comparison. So the product of the current and the voltage gives you power. The power to do anything, anything at all. Maybe not that much power. The power of the circuit, which is a very measurable and limited quantity. You are most likely going to be limited by the power adapter, the cable, the device, and then the meter. The multiplication and any counting or timing to determine energy, which is the power multiplied by a time period, is all done in software. So clock accuracy for energy measurements becomes important. That's actually beyond the scope of this video. I'm stopping at power measurement. These devices do often have other features, like the ability to check cables for modes of operation and read the data in the e-marker chip, or do things like check the plugged in adapter for the available modes of operation and the current limits in those modes. This is a bonus feature of the higher end models. The more basic meters are typically only meters. They will let you know if you are in a specific mode, but can't set the mode themselves. This all depends on how the meter interacts with the USB circuit. Some of these just pass everything through and strictly measure power. Some of these can interact with the data between the device to determine what is happening. In general, all of the USB-C devices were able to pass PD without any problem. Even if not rated for it, they all went up to five amps and measured it. The USB-A devices went up to three amps, even if they got a bit hot. I won't be diving into this too deep because in general, this is something that manufacturers cover well in their specifications. So the next thing about these meters, now that we know a little power is lost to the current shun, is something has to measure that voltage and therefore power has to come from somewhere. These devices will use a little bit of power on that USB bus to measure itself, essentially. This can be thought of as quiescent power. This is power that is always consumed no matter what the state of the circuit. A few of these are more advanced devices that offer a way to power the device externally to minimize this effect. And one of them is a pretty big offender, so it is 
probably best to be externally powered. There is certainly a learning curve to some of these devices. They all have different interfaces and the buttons all do multiple things. Some don't have buttons and some have very complicated menus and some language issues. So figuring out random click and hold or double clicks and trying to get the functions to save or change is a little bit of a challenge. Two of these come with computer software, the PowerZ and the FNRC. I have used the PowerZ software and done firmware updates and it's clunky at best, but so is the Siglent software for my fancy meters, so I guess don't expect much here. The software works. Okay, that was a lot to think about, and these meters are complicated but managed to accomplish quite an impressive amount of work inside a tiny package. So how good are they at doing this job? I'm not going to make a lecture on metrology, but basically the equipment I use is at least an order of magnitude or two orders of magnitude better than the equipment I am verifying. This is important. A sample size of one is being used and the accuracy is multiplied by two, assuming a standard distribution for a 95% confidence level in the results. This is optimistic. Hundreds of samples over several years is more likely to provide a picture of performance. Or measure one and multiply by two and she'll be right. In some cases, the measured resolution is the limiting factor in determining a zero. No least significant figures were added in measurements, which would effectively be a significant tolerance added in some cases. Okay, it's meter time. Power Z. Yeah, it's the older model here. I'm not buying the newer one anytime soon. This is the most expensive meter and the new version is more expensive. It is the second most featured. The interface and display are fairly easy to use, the power consumption is reasonable, and the series resistance is quite good. The voltage and current accuracy is better than 1%, which is great for a device this tiny. It has a full featured PC software package. The Finercy is next. This is a current model, but they do have a ton of other options out there. This meter has a price balance. You get the most features and you get that software package, USB A and C and the external ability. But if you don't do that, you get high idle power consumption. The current and voltage accuracy again are better than 1%. So not much more to ask for here. This meter can read all the different modes a charger has to offer as a bonus feature. The drop meter is a very inexpensive and basic device. The opposite of the first two looked at. The performance matches with the lower price too. It does surprisingly okay for a simple, cheap device. The meter with cables built in tend to have higher resistance though. I would not use this meter at 5 amps. The display is large and easy to read. The UNI-T is designed to measure energy more than power, so it does have a built-in timer. This meter does okay. The price isn't too high for what it is. The display is nice and big and easy to read. The resistance is higher with the cabled option again. Next is this MakerHawk MakerFire no idea tester. It kind of shows that it is a little bit less finished, the accuracy wasn't as refined, and it doesn't go as high in current. Despite having a little better series resistance, it's a weird one. Next is this Klein Tools meter. This is probably the most retail store USB meter you will find. You can get it at Lowe's and Walmart. The biggest downside to this meter is the pricing for what you get. The display is tiny for a large device. It has the cable design so the series resistance is higher and therefore not as good. I think they could have designed something better here. This is basically the Unity for twice the money and a worse display. Next up is this S27. This starts the subcompact meter category. The meter for the cost is not a bad option. The performance is on par with the other inexpensive meters. The power used isn't terrible and the series resistance is actually quite low. It's expanded uncertainty is probably like 25 to 3%, but it's $14. If it was 5% accurate, I'd still call it a bargain. The Foria is very inexpensive and also very inaccurate. It's okay on one amp, but it's just not good anywhere beyond that. So the name on these, yeah, 3C ass, yep. If you want to make a product, you should definitely put ass in the name. And that's all it was for 90 minutes. It won eight Oscars that year. This thing is tiny. It comes with two in one box. It certainly does sacrifice some performance for size and usability with its display and resolution, but it's impressive for the size and claims full data pass through. Next is the MakerHawk A-Torch, Torch again. Who names these things? The claims on this one are a bit crazy, 12 amps, but it does have incredibly low series resistance. So it probably can handle more current, not 12 amps, but more. This thing is tiny, low cost, and honestly the performance is pretty good for something this size. The value perspective is high with this one. The pluggable brand has a few different models out. This one is less power capable. The newer one can do 240 watts. It's a little more expensive with a slightly more recognizable name brand behind it. The performance is right on what is expected for something like this, a reasonable option. Okay, USB-A models. I'm just going to cover both of these in one blurb. They're both kind of okay. 
One has too much series resistance and the other isn't accurate, so I'd probably pick something else. I also tested another one of these and I didn't even bother including it. Okay, we are getting there. Time to do some comparisons. Time to look over these power meters thermally. I did the test at 3 amps. This is really just laziness because I wanted to do them all in one string and get it over in one time period. None of them really got too hot to touch at this current level. The ones with higher series resistance got warmer. What a surprise. The one thing to note is this is also at about 5 volts in, so some of these dissipate quite a bit more heat with a 20 volts in. At 48 volts in, some of these are not going to run continuously. In general, they all did okay here. The ones with wires got a little bit hotter. The USB-A models also tended to get hotter, mostly around the connectors. No real standouts here though. In terms of the idle power used, two of them really come to mind as good options. This is not necessarily for the power at 5 volts, but for the power at 5 volts and 20 volts being relatively stable. The A torch and the power Z are very good. Then looking at the series resistance, remember this is going to create a voltage drop in the device. The A torch with its 12 amp rating did the best, with the Fenersi being very close. These must use a smaller current shunt value to get this resistance down, 10 milliohms or so, or maybe even a Hall effect sensor. The burden voltage is going to be very low with these meters. The plot of the idle power used at 5 volts confirms the Fenersi is better if externally powered. Anything less than 100 milliwatts is pretty good here though. When taking this up to 20 volts, they basically all used more power. The A torch and the Power Z shine with more efficient conversion of voltage though. Neat. Maybe worth a teardown. Next, it's time to look at the cost of these things and the accuracy measured. At the high end, you get those extra features like PC software and much higher resolution and measurably better accuracy. So you are paying for something more, yes, and you are getting something better. This is worth it if you want the best measurement. For a $50 to $100 class instrument to perform this well is an achievement. On the plot, the current is the first bar and these are sorted by this value. The last one ran away off the chart. The main takeaway here is that the Fenersi and the Power Z have better performance in both categories. Do they need 1 or 10 microamp resolution? No. These values mean nothing for this instrument, but it's impressive what they achieve in this package. For the value perspective, the A torch is very interesting. It's not the most accurate, but it's acceptable and cheap. Okay, so that was a whirlwind. First thing was kind of learning a bit about these meters, why they exist and what they can be used for. They are great for indicating state of USB port and indicating how your device is charging. They are very useful to diagnose problems with USB cables, chargers, or devices. They are not the most accurate things out there, but that isn't to be expected for a subcompact piece of instrumentation. They work and perform as needed, well, mostly. One stood out as the clear loser of the bunch. The 4 i wasn't great. It didn't meet what I would call the minimum requirements of all the other devices tested. My sample size was one, so this could just be one device was the outlier, but it may be that the others are just better. Nearly all of them measured the same. The low cost options were almost all the same basic level of performance. I'd call them 2% grade instruments. The A torch is kind of surprising here in that it really outshines a lot of the others for value versus performance. That being said, I wouldn't use it at 12 amps. They do state that that's for short term only. This requires more research. The higher cost ones from PowerZ and Fenersi do achieve better than 1% accuracy. You are paying for more and you are getting more. This is impressive and they have a huge amount of other features. These features are better covered by the multitude of other videos on YouTube. So happy hunting and let me know if you have one of these and what you use it for. Thanks for watching. There's links in the description. Goodbye.